Joining me right now, Ed Morrissey from HotAir.com. Ed, you listened to the speech, didn't you? I did. I, I watched the speech on television. What What did you think? All our problems solved? You know, it, it was Groundhog Day. I've seen this speech before. <laughs> I know I've seen this speech before. I've seen the plan before. It was called the 2009 Stimulus Plan. And the same plan. It's the same yeah. plan. It's, it's, about, it's about just a little over half the cost of the first time we went around. And it's, uh, I, I guess it's sort of a hair of the dog <laughs> solution. Uh, oh, wait, it's, you, it's kind of like, you know, you, you bought a lemon from a car dealer, and then you go back in to buy a different car because you didn't like the lemon, and then they offer you the same car again. Yeah, well, actually, I have a funny story to tell about my dad about that, but yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, there was, he bought a car, had a problem with it, and uh, it, and lived with it for quite a while, and the very next car was the exact same car, and I said, Dad... <laughs> He says, but they said it was fixed in this model. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me let me ask you this because I, what I thought was interesting was the, the 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 juxtaposition in the media of Obama giving this big job speech where we're you know more investment we got an investment bank now uh, you know one of, you know uh, they, I mean we we all know it's the same stuff as before. What I thought was funny is that as that's going on, we're witnessing the implosion of one of the the poster children of the last stimulus, which was Solyndra, which I know you in particular. Particular, we're, we're following that story, but I mean, not not only do we have this company that's you know very close relationship with the Obama administration, uh, going there almost dozens of times uh, to the White House to meet with the president and and, and the administration, uh, taking half a billion dollars in stimulus money, then not only going bankrupt, but now their office is raided by the FBI, uh, and, and here Obama's making trying to make the case for more of that kind of of, of spending. Yeah, I mean, it, well, what's really curious about this is that, you know, in the first the first stimulus package, a big part of his argument was we're going to fuel the green tech, energy, green energy technology um, uh, industry. We're going to develop green energy here to replace all the coal and the oil that he's been at war with since he took office. And, uh, and Solyndra was the poster child for that effort. And when your poster child is busy having to fend off an FBI raid uh, on the same day that you're supposed to be telling Congress, hey, I've got another great idea about how to create jobs in America, uh, obviously that's a, that's a bad thing. That's a bad thing, Scott. And, and uh, uh, But what I found very, very interesting is that there wasn't one mention of the word energy in this speech. Not one. Not one. Even though economic expansion requires plentiful, reliable energy in order to in order to work, even though the reason why demand is down, which is a big part of what we have uh, the problem that we have in um, in the economy, part of the reason why, and part of it's unemployment. The, uh, the other part of it is that fuel prices shot up, and and it had the usual expected uh, multiplier effect through the distribution chain. So prices went up, and, and buying power eroded. That's the reason why people aren't, aren't aren't spending as much is because their buying power isn't as good, and so you know any. That- any jobs, any economic expansion is going to require some, you know, reliable, plentiful energy, and yet he didn't say a single word about that last night. And, you know, that's it. That's an interesting point, uh, you know, especially uh, those of us, you know, coming from energy-rich states like North Dakota, uh, where, you know, the energy sector has set our economy on fire. I mean, we're, you know, looking for workers. Uh, construction companies are coming from all over the country uh, to build infrastructure here. And, and funny how that works, how the economy booms, and then you build the infrastructure to serve the economy with the revenues from the booming economy. I mean, uh, I mean that's how we're doing it. I mean, I don't understand why we can't do that on the national scale, get out of the way of the energy producers and let's set this economy on fire everybody seems to be saying the speech last night was deja vu i mean I, when that first started i mean it was almost like sort of a i don't want to say talking point but i mean it was kind of the reaction of conservatives uh to you know what, what we first you know we're hearing about what the speech was and now the reality of the speech as delivered uh but but even like the usa today is saying this is deja vu, and I know you posted on your blog this morning. Uh, the Associated Press cha- fact checked it, and, and you know pretty much this is all the things that we've heard before. I mean, is, right. is that kind of the consensus now? Is this is just more the same? Well, I think it's maybe even less of the same. There isn't there isn't actually yet any firm proposal. There wasn't really a whole lot of specifics in that speech. There were some, this is you know what it reminded me of. I mean, other than the 2009 stimulus. Uh, uh, effort. It reminded me of his deficit reduction speech in April. 
he got he got up. He gave a big speech. It was nationally covered about how he was how he had a plan to reduce deficits. And honestly, Scott, a lot of the same things he said then were in the speech last night. You know, get rid of uh, you know get rid of the tax cuts for the wealthy. You know, the the um, I don't think he actually said corporate gen owners last night. I think he's learned that that's not a um, that, that nobody's paying attention to that. Uh, but, you know, he talked about millionaires. You know, it's a choice between millionaires and billionaires and working families or millionaires and billionaires and teachers and police officers. Um, all that stuff was said in April, too. We have yet to see the plan from that April speech. He has never actually produced the plan from the April speech. The deficit reduction plan from the White House is still missing. It's on the back of milk cartons. It's Nobody has seen the thing. And, uh, and so... Until we actually see a plan, I'm not even sure what we're going to get one. Well, you know, that, that, was, that was an interesting point we had on David Fredoso from the Washington Examiner uh, uh, earlier in the program, and he said, according to the administration, they're still writing the bill. And, and we've already seen it, by the way, go from $300 billion to what are we up to now, about $450 billion. That's, uh, yeah, I, I heard the same thing. Uh, you know, if, if they're still billion. writing the plan, how much, how much more bloat are we going to see by the time this actually hits Congress in a way that, that like, the CBO could score? Um, well, I, I think they're going to try to think they're going to try to keep it down so the CBO doesn't score it too high. But I mean, even at four hundred fifty billion dollars, can you imagine going to the House Republicans after the midterm election, after all this time that we've been talking about cutting spending, and saying, "Oh, by the way, I need another four hundred fifty billion dollars in blank checks." And, and and by the way, I know I said it was paid for, but you guys are going to have to figure out where to get the money for it. I, you know. I, to me was it was a jaw-dropping moment because the White House has been saying it's paid for, it's paid for. In the speech, in the beginning of the speech, he says it's all paid for, it's all paid for. And then minutes later, he says, and I'm going to tell the Deficit Commission that while they're trying to cut $1.5 trillion from, uh, from future spending to find more cuts so that we can pay for this thing. <laughs> it's like saying, I'm going, to take you out for your, I'm going to take you out for your birthday dinner and then sticking you with the check. And I, I imagine the cuts are going to come down the road, too. A couple minutes left. I just want to ask you quickly, 2012 debate, coming into it, uh, what was your reaction? Perry, obviously, I think the front runner going into it. Is he still the front runner now? I think he probably still is. I mean, I think it's going to come down to Perry and, and Romney, assuming nobody else gets in the race. And, and even maybe now, even if somebody else does get in the race, I think Perry made a good argument that he's a, that he's a, uh, you know, a primetime guy, and uh, it's really going to come down between him and Romney. And uh, you know, Romney's well-funded. He's very well-organized. He's cool. He's calm. He's collected. This is not a guy you're going to chase out of the race before before the polling, you know, before the actual polling starts. And um, and so he's going to be in it. And I think Perry's going to be in it. And I think we're going to start to see other other candidates get out. You know, there's another couple of debates in rapid succession here, but maybe by about mid-October, I think you're going to see the funding dry up for everybody else, and they're going to have to start getting out. What about Michelle Bachman? Obviously, she was at the uh, at the front of the pack, and about 15 seconds left here. Did she hurt herself or help herself last night? Or uh, didn't during help the debate? herself. Didn't, didn't hurt. Didn't help herself though, and she really needed to help herself. All right, Ed Morrissey from HotAir.com. Thanks for being on the program. I'm Rob Port, sitting in for Scott Hennon. We'll be back right after.